Ready for some intergenerational quickfire questions? Here we go. What is your name? My name is Reem El Safar. My name is Mari Pangestu. Where are you from? From Iraq. I'm from Indonesia. What title do you have or how would you describe yourself? So I am a Max Aviso Atkins Climate Ambassador. I am the executive director, co-founder and executive director of Mina Youth Network and co-founder of Iklim Krizi Tokulu, which is Turkey's first inter-university climate crisis club. My title is Managing Director for Development Policy and Partnerships at the World Bank Group. What was your first climate or environmental conference? My first climate conference was the Youth for Climate Driving Ambition event in Milan, Italy last year. I would say it would be in the 1990s uh, and it was a conference on haze. You know, what do you do with cross-border externalities uh, such as haze? How old were you when you first heard about climate change? I would say when I first heard about it, I was in probably middle school, um, but it was a very basic um, sort of knowledge. It's more like, oh, there's global warming and that's all I knew. In the 1990s, Indonesia was actually quite uh, forward-looking. We had an environment minister who was an economist, uh, and he was the one who really tried to put the negative externalities into the national accounting. So that was way before uh, you, you know, we had a more global discussion on climate change. My own big change was in 2007, when we, uh, I was in government then, uh, we hosted the UNFCCC and the whole year uh, we focused on, on climate change, not just as an environmental issue, but really that it was a whole of economy, whole of government and whole of society approach, which is the approach that we are really now trying to, to uh, really make sure happen today. What area of climate solutions do you feel is most urgent? Personally, as a biology student, I really advocate for nature-based solutions because they are the most sustainable way of, of setting up our systems and, and going back, transitioning to a more sustainable society and economy as well. Energy access and energy transition is one big one for me. And the second one would be agriculture, food and land use, and within that, uh, the nature-based solutions. I think those two, for me, would be the, the, the two biggest ones. And, and adaptation is, uh, uh, within the second one, uh, also a, a very important. What actions do you take in your daily life? In my personal life, I try to raise awareness with the people around me. Um, many of my friends did not even know what COP was, and I got to tell them about what happens here and, and the work that is being done by, by stakeholders, by governments, by youth who are participating in these spaces. Well, I have a very, uh, let's say, uh, environmentally conscious son from a very young age. <laughs> so uh, we are very conscious of, of uh, what we do at home. Uh, we, we don't use plastics and we don't waste food uh, and we don't waste water. We are always reminded uh, by, by, our, by our children about the importance of, of taking care of the, the earth, actually. Who was your first climate hero? I would say my first climate hero, hmm, Jane Goodall. We all know she is one of the most amazing and great researchers and climate and environmental activists in the world. It has to be Professor Emil Salim, who was the economist who, who, who I told you about, who became the environment minister. And, uh, and he was, I think, the conscience that uh, woke up many, many of the people in my own country. What responsibility do you feel your generation has to secure a safe future? Our generation is taking the responsibility because we have to take the responsibility because we are living in this world and we are the people who are going to be leaders, the future leaders, the people who are going to be in all different sectors of society. For those of us who are still in the position uh, to make decisions, uh, to uh, allocate a budget, to, to uh, influence policy, to advocate for policy, I think it's our responsibility to, to really put it high up on the agenda. And so you've got to integrate uh, a climate with the development agenda and I do think that's doable and that that's really the biggest responsibility and challenge that we all have.